Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Wee Knives Thug, a chunky little tanky uh, Tanto, compound ground Tanto that is available right now, or it should be. Knives come in and out of stock, but I'll leave the link down there. You guys can check for yourself. Uh, thank you so much to the good, the great, the Nick Shabazz for sending this in for review. Please make sure that you subscribe to Nick Shabazz. Follow him on Instagram. Awesome. Um, I'm going to guess most of you are already. Uh, thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Uh, not a huge knife. In fact, very, very short. Overall length of the Wee Thug is coming in at not even six and a half inches. Just shy of six and a half inches. Blade length is definitely coming in under three inches, which is going to be helpful for a lot of people. Uh, overall, uh, I'm sorry, overall blade length is actually something like 2.65, right? Yeah. Uh, and then your cutting edge is coming in at exactly two and a half inches. So let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and Rat 2. Shorter than both, definitely taller and chunkier than, uh, than both as well. Uh, how about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Definitely same type of thing here. Shorter, but still chunky. And uh, last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade uh, Bug Out. Still getting used to saying that. Same kind of deal here. This is a short, chunky little knife. It's not ultra, ultra, ultra thick, as I'll show you here in just a moment. It just kind of has that presence because it's so short. It is a little tiny bit thicker than the Spyderco Para 3, the blade stock looks to be extremely similar. So it's not like we're looking at a mega, you know, chunky blade stock or anything like that. Um, what is the measurement on the blade? Let's see here. Uh, blade stock thickness is coming in at, honestly, it's kind of surprising, 154 thousandths. It is definitely, definitely thicker than the pair of three at about 140 to 145. Let's go ahead and do uh, uh, carry profile. This way, up against the PM2 and Para 3, you can see here that this is both uh, shorter, it's shorter uh, this way. I mean, it's nowhere near as long and it's nowhere near as tall. Um, it is a little bit thicker though. So it's not gonna carry too bad in the pocket. Let's take a look at the inside. Got my flashlight. As per usual, you can get my flashlight down. In the uh, My Tools section of my description, you can see there that there's no milling on the inside. That's kind of surprising to me, but okay, it's not really that big of a deal. Let's do a hardware check, get out my tools. Tools are also very recommendable, very inexpensive. You can find those in the exact same spot in my description where it says my tools. I'm gonna guess that the pivot is a T8, yes. And then the body screws, are they also a T8? Oh yeah, they are, okay. How about the pocket clip screws? Yep, how about the lock bar insert screw? Yes. And those are those go all the way through to the other side, which I I don't mind. I don't I don't really understand why people critique that, right? I mean, yeah, if you strip it out, you strip the, you know, the the threads on the titanium, then you're in trouble. It's pretty unlikely you're going to do that. But if you do do that, then it's a problem, right? But uh, I I just it's never been something where I'm oh my gosh, you know, what if that happens? I don't think that's going to happen. Um. Yeah, okay, so easy to take apart, right? Let's move on into the meat and potatoes of the review here. What do we have for materials? We have, in this case, titanium with a very interesting finish on it. And then we have uh, satin finish CPM 20 CV. Uh, they do offer this in carbon fiber. It'll, of course, weigh a little bit less. In fact, you know what? We should probably weigh it so that you know. I don't have the carbon fiber one here, but I will go ahead and weigh the titanium one. Feels like four ounces, maybe. Oh, more than that, 4.37 ounces. So your ratios are definitely gonna be off. If you're big into ratios, this is gonna bother you. If you're like me and you don't care so much, you just kinda what the object weighs, right? And how big is it in the pocket? It may not bother you as much, right? Uh, but if you like a bigger, chunkier knife, uh, or I'm sorry, if you like a smaller, chunkier knife, maybe that weight won't bother you. You do with that information what you will. Um, yeah, so anyways, there is a carbon fiber version of this that also looks good, uh, a little bit less weight. This finish, what, how they did this titanium is really nice. I'm not really sure. I mean, here's the thing. It almost looks like my background. <laughs> 
Eh, uh, I like it. I, I don't know, you know, it looks like maybe something you would use as a backsplash uh, or maybe a countertop or something. It's nice. And uh, it's not uh, it's not textured. I'm not feeling anything like that. It just feels like smooth titanium. It's also contoured. This is just an it's just it's something different, right? I mean, what we generally see is tumbled, black washed, polished, bead blasted, textured, right? Uh, that that's what we see. Anodized. Oh wow, it's brown, right? That's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually like bronze anno. I'm just saying, like, that's what we normally see. So, stuff like this, not really sure how they did it. Looks nice. Uh, edges, nicely knocked down. How are the ergonomics? I mean, it's a teeny tiny, well, it's not teeny tiny, but it's a short little knife, right? So, you're only getting a three finger, really, you're only getting a three finger purchase, right? That's the case. The pocket clip is making itself known. It really wants you to know that it's there. And it does so by jamming itself into your palm. That pocket clip is uncomfortable. This, why? Why? It's like a Tanto blade. Look at this thing. Come on. That doesn't need to be like that. We can, you, they could have, you know, made this a spoon shape at the end or something. That just bothers me like crazy. I mean, you're forced into this position. You have to hold it this way. That pocket clip, man, it's, yeah, you know, it's just like a ski ramp. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. This does not need to be this prominent. It does not need to be that pointy, right? You're bearing down on that. You're going to feel that clip, right? Uh, now, is it a reason not to buy it? No, it's just frustrating, right? It's, I'm not going to be like, you can't buy this because the pocket clip was it. No, it's just kind of frustrating. That's, that's honestly what I think. I do like how Wii puts their logo in the middle of the pivot. That doesn't bother me at all. I also like the contrast of this very deep bronze and this sort of backsplashy charcoal, light charcoal finished titanium. However, we're going to, these horizontal lines, it just looks nice. I just, I like this. It looks good. The thumb studs also have that bronze, almost olive drab green. Why did I say it? Uh, OD green, almost, right? The other side of the pivot, same kind of thing. It's a nice contrast. Uh, the blade, I'm going to say what I usually say. The satin finish makes it look cheap. There are different levels of satin finish, right? Your, your super high polish, like what we saw on the um, MBK Field Trekker. Ooh, yes, very nice, much like, right? Uh, the, uh, the hand rub satin finishes, if they're done correctly, very nice. This, uh, I can get this on a Civivi, right? You can get, you can get this, this finish on a Now, to be fair, the finish that I would recommend or that I wanted to see on this is like a slightly reflective tumbled finish, which is also a finish that you can get on a 50 to $60 knife. So that's probably not a great example, but this l doesn't look as expensive as, as this knife is. Now that's gonna be a matter of opinion, right? But if you're watching this video, you probably want my opinion. I just don't like how, th th it's fine. There's, I mean, it's not a spectacular satin finish. It's just, I'm so bored of seeing it on everything, right? I, I just, you know, they're capable of doing stuff like this. This is great. Let's do something different with the blade. Speaking of the blade, that's definitely the highlight of the knife. Oh, by the way, how's the action? The action's good. It's about what you'd expect from Wii, right? It's not uh, necessarily like falling shut. Just a couple of wiggles and it's going to, you know, fall down there. You can easily do the reverse flick despite it being so short. I got to give this knife props. It's so short, but it's actually, it's fairly easy to engage uh, because of the positioning and size of the thumb studs. And it's almost easier to just do the reverse flick on this guy because of where your finger naturally wants to go. I don't have, I have to readjust for the thumb because I got to get down lower. But for the reverse flick, my finger's already in the right place to do that. So yeah, or if you just, of course, you don't have to be fancy. You just wheel it out. It'll work just fine. Nice cut out there. I don't think it's actually raised, but there, it is cut out, which is what I, you know, it's like at least do that uh, so you can get in there and move that lock bar out of the way. It's fine. Um, not, I mean, double clutch. There's no, there's no flipper tab. So you're not really dealing with that at all. Um, yeah, it's running on bearings. It's pretty much what you'd expect from Wii. The blade, definitely the highlight. We have uh hollow grinds, primary hollow grind, and then flat out here, uh, on the secondary. Um, and it gives you this nice, strong kind of, 
little rhinoceros looking. I mean, this knife looks like a tiny angry rhinoceros and that's kind of cool, you know? Uh, plenty of uh, thickness carried out to the tip. That's definitely going to be a strong blade. Blade is CPM 20 CV. That's great. Going to hold an edge for a long time. Uh, lots of corrosion resistance. Not very tough, but the geometry here is probably going to let... I mean, let's be real. What are you going to be using this knife for, right? You're going to be pounding on this thing. You're probably going to be... You probably want something bigger, like, you know, probably not even a knife, right? If you have to question whether or not the blade geometry is tough enough to handle what you're going to do with it, you're probably using the wrong tool. It's just my opinion. Flat, uh, carried out to, ah, what is that, 65% or so, the length of the blade, um, but it's right through the middle, or almost right through the middle, so plenty tough. Swedge looks good. The entire blade just looks great. And uh, if you guys are looking at this and thinking, is that just a hint of a recurve? Yeah, maybe. Let's see if we can, can I, can I bend this down so we can see? There might be the slightest recurve in this blade. So, all right. Um, it's going to be kind of a, a bummer to sharpen. Number one, 20 CV. Some people are going to go, oh, that's easy. Okay, for the vast majority of people who are going to sharpen, you know, or are going to try, it's not going to be easy, right? Nobody ever sat down at a sharpener for the first time, sharpened up some completely destroyed or reprofiled 20 CV that was heat treated properly and went, gosh, that was easy. <laughs> Nobody has ever said that. 20 CV to somebody who's never done that before is not fun to sharpen. It's going to take some time, right? Uh, so if you're used to sharpening steels, like CPM 20 CV or reprofiling them, then maybe it's easy for you. Vast majority of people watching, not going to have a lot of experience with that. So I've sharpened CPM 20 CV, I don't know, or M390 slash 204P, something like, you know, 20 times now or something like that. And some of it's just been like little things. And there was, and I, sometimes I've had to do a little bit of reprofiling. If you're wondering what I use, I use a KME. It's listed down in the description under the My Tools section. Uh, I still, I still am like, eh, this isn't my favorite thing. <laughs> you know, I, it still takes quite a bit. What I'm saying is, is that you have two different, uh, edges. You have this one here, which is a slight recurve. Those are never fun, uh, on an angled system at least, right? Was a real freehand. Okay. Yeah. Freehand sharpening exists. That's great. If you want to teach yourself how to do that, you can do that. I don't have the patience for it, but I know that there is a huge benefit. I don't know why I'm going off so, so many tangents today. Just predicting left and right what people are going to say about this. Um, yeah. If you want to do that, you can. Sharpening two separate angles is not going to be fun. Uh, we have uh, one of the uh, uh, edges is a recurve. So that's going to be create a problem. Um, but the blade is super cool. Uh, definitely. The blade is definitely the aesthetic highlight of the knife and it ties everything together, right? You have this interesting, but simple handle profile. You get to the blade and whoa, aggressive, right? But it's like, it's tiny, pretty neat. Um, other side, same thing, designer's logo, which I'm unfamiliar with, but I will, uh, give you guys a close up of that. I know people want to know a, a lot of the time, but you know, my stance on that is, is that if I have, um, you know, information on the designer, I recognize it, then I'll talk about it a little bit. But if I don't have any information initially, um, then I'm probably not going to dive into it too much. Um, because it, the review is really just about the knife and the design itself. Um, so eh, that's how it's been. That's how it's always going to be. Uh, there's a backspacer. And they decided to put the lanyard bar in the backspacer, which I think is great because it keeps it completely out of the way of the, in my opinion, much more important stuff like the pocket clip and how the rest of the knife looks, right? Lanyard people. <laughs> Say, what? Well, why can't we be prioritized? You don't need to be prioritized, right? And that's it, the people. The lanyard thing doesn't need to be prioritized. It can just be there if you want it, but everything else should be about pretty much every other part of the knife. The screw placement, in my opinion, is more important on, than whether or not the lanyard thing is in the right place, right? So this is a great, what I'm saying is, boy, this is salty review. <laughs> I actually really like this knife. Why am I being so f weird about this? Um, the lanyard uh, bar or lanyard barrels in a good place, right? It's out of the way of everything else is there if you want it. Um, the uh, pocket clip, positioning of it, 
pretty good. The depth is pretty good. This bill sucks. Uh, that's the one thing. Like everything else about this knife is, you know, is pretty cool. Uh, it, there's little nitpicks, but the one thing that sucks is the bill on the clip. It's way too point. I just don't understand, right? It functions. It's made out of titanium. It's also kind of stamped, just stamped out. You know, uh, I, I, it would be nice if it was, I don't know. Truthfully, I'd, the clip would be much easier to swallow if it just didn't have this big pointy thing. There's a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. So that's great. That's what we expect. Locking up something like 20%, maybe less. No blade play at all. Uh, stop pin back here. No shouldering. It looks to be flat, which is fine. It doesn't need to be shouldered. And the blade is perfectly centered with no play. All right, so, whoopsie-daisy. Uh, so, once again, this is a short, chunky, tanky knife. Some people are not going to like the balance on it or the ratios, especially with weight. Uh, the blade is a uh, Tanto compound recurve. Um, at least that's how I'm labeling it because of the thing, right? So, it's not going to be super fun to sharpen. Um, the pocket clip, uh, the bill, specifically the pocket clip, sucks. And you can only get a three-finger position on it, which is something that some people dislike and some people like. How much is this? It's $250 for titanium, 20 CV, and it's a frame lock. That's pretty much in line with what I expect from Wii, right? It used to be, I remember, do you guys remember when Wii knives first came out and you could get a titanium frame lock and usually it was s 35 vn for like 170 from Wii? Um, and then they came out with a couple of 20 CV models and I remember they were like 200, 210 and you're like, wow, you know? Yeah, so we're seeing these, um, you know, come up. Um, this is something I've been excited about for a long time because I like little tanky knives, right? Um, I I love the finish on the titanium. I don't like the finish on the blade because I'm just bored with it. But it's cool. Um, there is an enormous amount of competition at the $250 mark. You have so much. That is one of the most ridiculous. Like, that is fierce. You enter that arena and there's fire and teeth everywhere. Uh, $250, there's a lot of options. And let me tell you something. For $280, you can get an American-made ZT0562 utilizing literally the exact same materials. So with a lot of Wii's knives, it's just like, come on, why are these... Why are these anywhere close to, you know, the American competition of it? It, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, this is a cool knife. $250 is about what I expect. When, and when I say that, I say, I, I mean, like, I think their stuff is kind of starting to get overpriced. And I'm starting to say that about a lot of stuff. <laughs> Does that mean I'm becoming a bitter reviewer? I don't know. You know, on one hand, it's like I can, I can understand, like, price increases. I understand why that's occurring. Um, but I also don't think we should be anywhere near, uh, the price of some uh, of the American competition out there. And it is, um, so, you know, this is neat. It, you kind of really have to like chunky little tanky knives. Um, but this isn't going to make your life any easier. Like there's nothing here that I'm like, oh, this gives you a distinct advantage, right? In your day to day, you know, utilitarian adventure. No, you probably, you're going to buy this because you think it looks cool, right? It functions well. It's made well. It's made out of premium materials. There's no reason why it shouldn't stand the test of time. Um, so I guess I recommend it in that sense, but not really all the way around to everybody. This is going to be kind of a specific, like you, you buy this if it's really speaks to you. Um, but there's just, this is good. There's just way too much competition at 250 bucks for me to go, yeah, you should rush out and buy the Wii Thug, right? Um, so, I don't know. Um, it's recommendable, but it's not recommendable. It's just, you have to ask yourself what kind of person you are, right? Is this the is this the knife for you? Do you like the elements that I, you know, pointed out here that I think are good enough to overlook the bad? And do you want to spend $250 on those good elements? That's pretty much it. That's all I can say. Um, I wasn't sure. I was excited about that one, but I wasn't sure what the outcome would be. So there it is. Uh, thanks again to Nick Shabazz. Make sure you guys subscribe to Nick. 
Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex. They'll go right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.